I'm so deeply humbled to receive this honor today. And I want to dedicate this award to the hundreds of victims of asbestos disease from the town of Libby in my home state. I want to thank the Asbestos Disease Awareness Organization's Linda Reinstein and honor her late husband, Alan. And I'd also like to thank co-founder Doug Larkin for his hard work. We can build upon their noble sacrifices by raising awareness in the hopes that no one else must die from this silent killer. I want to recognize some special Montanans in the crowd today, Dr. Brad Black and members of the Card Clinic in Libby. Thank you so much, Brad. Thank you all of you for your dedication to asbestos victims and their families. As I think about this award, I'm haunted by the words of my friend, Les Gramstead. Now, who's Les? Well, I'll tell you. I first met Les in the year 2000 at a home in Libby, lots of folks there. And that occurred shortly after news reports came out that, about the exposure and the tragic story of widespread asbestos contamination from the former W.R. Grace mine there in Libby. Thousands were sick. Hundreds had died. People were getting together. What can they do? And over coffee and huckle pie, Les watched me closely. He was wary. He came up to me after his neighbors had finished telling me their stories. And Les said to me, I'll never forget it. He looked straight at me in the eye. And he said, Senator, a lot of people have come to Libby. And a lot of have told us they would help. Then they leave and we never hear from them again. Well, that night I told Les I would do all I could. I told myself the same thing. I would do all I could. And I wouldn't back down. I wouldn't give up until we, the people in Libby had justice. Well, Les accepted my offer, and then pointed his finger to me and he said, I'll be watching, Senator, and I knew he would. And I knew I'd be watching myself too, because this was something that was so important to me. After that day, Les and I became friends. I relied on his counsel, the straightforward way, and what we could do to help bring justice to the folks in Libby. I shined a national spotlight on Libby for Les, and for all the residents of Libby, and for that matter, any community wronged by greed. I'm sorry to say that Les passed away from asbestos-related diseases in January of 2007, but I haven't forgotten his words, and I never will. I keep a picture of Les on my desk to remind me of the promise I made to Les and the people of Libby. That desk is there in my office, and that photo means so much to me. The people of Libby were poisoned in the name of greed. They've been dying for more than a decade. New residents continue to get sick all the time. Libby, Montana is the deadliest Superfund site in all of America. And the story of Libby reminds us that we're in this together and that public health tragedies like this could happen anywhere in America. On June 17, 2009, after a decade of fighting for this designation, we won part of the battle when EPA declared a public health emergency in Libby. We worked so hard to get that designation. We got it. Beginning last spring, we won another hard-fought battle. Thanks to the Affordable Care Act, every resident in Libby now has access to screenings for asbestos-related diseases and medical care if diagnosed with an asbestos-related disease. Every chance I get, I bring White House cabinet secretaries, EPA administrators, wherever I can get, to Libby, Montana, to profile, to show how important Libby is. I tell anyone who will listen about what happened there. Yet, the fact remains that outside of Montana, Many people are not even aware of the dangers of asbestos in homes and at work. The World Health Organization says that about 125 million people worldwide encounter asbestos in the workplace every day. 100,000 workers are expected to die from asbestos-related diseases each year. I'd like to take this opportunity to urge our Surgeon General to help us out, help us in this effort by issuing a warning about the dangers of asbestos. Everyone gathered here today plays an important role in educating the world about the dangers of asbestos. All do. Thank you for all that you do. Please know, even though I couldn't join you in person tonight, I'm with you in this fight and I will continue to be with you till we get to the end of this and we rid this world of this scourge disease. Thank you very much.